morning youtubers evil len coming in your ears and today i thought i'd give you a, a bit of a guided tour history lesson of the richard the third remembrance route which is happening tomorrow and uh, this is all about the death of richard the third because he was recently well about two years ago now discovered in a car park in leicester well under a car park he wasn't in the car park and uh, they're doing a remembrance route tomorrow just to show him around all the areas where basically the Battle of Bosworth happened and uh, I'm going to show you those places and give you a little bit of a, a guided tour and, um, and show you what's going off tomorrow now the Battle of Bosworth for those I'm sure you'll all remember from your history lessons at school was on 22nd of August 1485 and it was between Richard III from York and Henry Tudor who was a uh, Lancasterian. Now first of all I'm going to make a bit of a caveat here. I, uh, I'm not a historian. I'm doing half of this riding, riding a motorbike so if I get any of my facts wrong please excuse me. Correct me nicely in the comments below but don't be a dick about it. But um, yeah this was the basically the Battle of Bosworth marked the end of the, um, the War of the Roses between York and Lancaster. That had been going on all the way through the 15th century. Henry had been exiled, or he'd fled, to Brittany and France. And he, uh, he decided to potter back and, and reclaim the throne. Uh, Richard III was in Nottingham at the time. Henry landed in Wales, came up through Wales, and um, formed an army of about 5,000 men. A lot of them French mercenaries and Welsh that he collected on the way. Richard III had about 10, 000 to 10 to 15,000 men, so heavily outnumbered Henry. And um, the whole area I'm looking up in front of me is basically the Battle of Bosworth area. Now, the, the, the kind of hill, if you like, uh, Bosworth Hill over there, that's where Richard was. A lot of the lower area here was all Fenland, marshland, uh, which is where Henry was. So Richard had... Henry outnumbered and had the higher ground, but he still lost, for reasons why I'll explain shortly. So let's move on, let's go and have a look at a couple of places. As you can see, in preparation for the route tomorrow, a huge, I mean, this whole area is going to be manic tomorrow, and I've got to go out to do an Easter egg run. So that should be interesting, but yeah, the whole area, they're expecting huge numbers of people to come and um, and watch and as you can see they've been out with the cones parking is going to be impossible this whole area is coned off and they've got signs everywhere saying route for Richard III now Richard III actually mainly down to Shakespeare was portrayed as a bit of a dickhead really a bit of a whinger, weak, cripple um, you know, various things wrong with him, skeletal issues, and actually, to be honest, it wasn't that bad. Um, the actual final battle, he was at the front, and he he led his men in, into battle, and he was actually a better tactician. He was more used to battle, and he died at the front, whereas Henry was at the back. He was more of a commerce person. He didn't have the battle experience, but he stayed firmly at the back. So uh, Richard has been aligned quite a lot, as you can see, signs everywhere. Now something I forgot to mention was, Henry had 5,000 or thereabouts, but he also had Lord Stirling and William Stirling. Uh, they had 6,000 men, so really it was 11,000 versus 15,000. Still Richard had outnumbered him. But Sterling was kind of a bit non-committal. He was waiting to see what happened. On somewhere on a hill to the north of Dadlington, which is kind of somewhere over there, they sat and waited. They sat and waited until they could see what was happening. And they only really jumped into the battle really at the end. Now we're coming into the village of Sutton Cheney. The reason why Sutton Cheney is important is the church around the corner here is where Richard III 
had his held his last mass on the night before the battle. Little church just there. So the route stopping here for a 10 minutes mass tomorrow. It's stopping at various points. It's starting off in Leicester at the Leicester University. Potter's all around this area and then it heads back to Leicester Cathedral where he's going to be interred in his final resting place. Well, final for now. Now if we move on now, we're going to the battlefield centre. Now the battle itself was over many miles. It was actually spread out. It wasn't just in one field, one place. Chaos around here, so many things closed off. It's all these cones are everywhere. So yeah, the battle was across now on the other side of that hill that I showed you a second ago. And um, it was spread out across the whole Fenland, the whole marshland and that ridge as well. So it wasn't just in one place. Now they recently said that the battlefield centre was in the wrong place. It's not quite in the wrong place. It is part of where, you know, the, it was part of the battlefield. Um, but it wasn't the actual place where Richard III was killed and you can see up there that up there is the battlefield centre I'm trying to stay on the road wibbly wobbly uh, and you can see they're doing all sorts up there in preparation for tomorrow so again there's going to be more ceremony there's going to be all sorts of things uh, falconry exhibits and what have you being displayed up there that's quite cool okay so that's the battlefield centre I wouldn't recommend coming around here tomorrow, it's going to be chaos. So the next place I'm going to take you is Dadlington. So back in Sutton Cheney, all these places are only a couple of miles apart. As you can see, well three, you can see there the signpost is saying Dadlington 3. So you get a scale of the distance of all these places I'm taking you to. They're all relatively close. Actually, no, tell a lie, I'm not going to take you to Dadlington now. I'm going to take you to where Richard III died. Now, the hill to my right, we're on the other side of the hill from the battlefield centre again. We're quite near to Dadlington and Stoke Golding. I've got Stoke Golding airfield coming up on the left hand side soon. And um, this is the Fenland, the marshland that Henry had to fight from. Now, Richard made a big mistake. He split his army into three, three lots of about 5,000. And he, um, he had different commanders looking after those. And he signalled to uh, his right flank commander to come and, and help him with the attack. And they didn't move, they stayed there. So he signalled to his commander to, uh, to attack on the right flank and he didn't come. Now he saw an opportunity, Richard did, of blasting through and getting to Henry and killing the commander-in-chief, basically, of the opposing army. And he did this, and he almost did it, to be fair. It could have swung almost the other way. But he didn't. He, he got nearly as far. He managed, to, oh, he managed to kill Henry's standard barrier, but didn't manage to uh, get to Henry himself, because uh, Henry's guard came in around him and protected him. Um, now it was at that point the Stirlings came from, they saw their opportunity and they came swooping in. They've been sat on the sidelines all this time doing absolutely nothing, not joining in, being non-committal. They saw their opportunity and swung in when they saw Henry being threatened, saved Henry and in a bloody battle with Richard going down fighting all the way to the end, now they say that was at Fen Lane Farm. We're on Fen Lane now. And this is Fen Lane Farm on my left here. So this is roughly the place where Richard III was killed. All because he decided to try and end the battle quicker. And he gambled and he failed. You snooze, you lose. Okay, so now I'm going to take you to Dadlington.
you have to excuse me a little bit folks I'm uh, suffering from tail end of a cold aka chronic man flu I almost died of it seriously it was that dangerous lots of bloody canals around here very pretty I might need to stop and blow my nose actually it's getting a bit snotty in here this is Darlington, very pretty little village and they're all ready for tomorrow as you can see with all the marquees up and they're going to stop here for a 10 minute uh, ceremony the reason why Darlington is important is a lot of the dead from both sides was buried here after the battle and just around here somewhere there's a little church Church of St. James the Greater, which was put up here after the actual uh, battle. And it says here on that plaque, this church dates from the earliest, early 12th century. In 1511, King Henry VIII authorised the founding of a chantry chapel here to commemorate, this commemorate the souls of those killed at the Battle of Bosworth, 1485, fought in this parish at the field of Red Moor. So yeah, a lot of the dead were buried here. Spooky. Another little interesting uh, feature of the local area. Oh, see if we can catch it. It's the battlefield line. See the steam engine? you got the whole uh, preservation battlefield line up here, which is really cool. Uh, you can hear it from my house sometimes. Toot toot. See if we can uh, chase the train. I can hear it chuff 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 chuff. There's the train. Prairie class. Don't ask me how I know that. Jeez, sweet. Chickens in the road. There are chickens in the road. Chickens! Do you want a free chicken? <laughs> yeah. Now we're coming into the village of Stoke Golding. And that church you can see just there relates to Henry now oh, cyclists bloody everywhere today I'm refrain, refraining from commenting about cyclists I'll be a good boy but anyway what was the same yes anyway that church so yes, that church just there is obviously St. Margaret of Antioch, if that's how you say it. And that church is grooved in the lintels, sills, window sills, lintels, whatever, the, the um, no, don't get yourself killed, love, the stone bits at the bottom of a window. And um, in those uh, stone window sills, I suppose. There's all lots and lots and lots of grooves, and allegedly that's where Henry's men sharpened their swords before the battle. And somewhere down here is the final part of our story. There's a road called Crown Hill, which I'm not entirely sure where it is, but we'll find it. And that's where Henry was crowned king 
the first of the Tudor line. Well, here we are, Crown Hill Close. So somewhere up here, there is a uh, oak tree, which is now in a private, somebody's private garden. And uh, underneath that oak tree, with a table and chairs taken from a local farmhouse, and the coronet that was found in a hawthorn bush when it fell from Richard III's head, the crowned Henry VIII, the first of the Tudor dynasty. And so ended the War of the Roses. Now, I'm not entirely sure. There's various trees around here. One of these could be the oak tree. Not entirely sure. But... Uh, There you go. Is that, that it? Could be it. I don't know. What's an oak tree look like when it's not in leaf? Because it is winter. Still, start of spring. That could be it, maybe. Anyhow, there you go. A little bit of a, a, uh, a storyline for Richard III and the procession tomorrow in 2015. Hope you enjoyed that little bit of a uh, scattergun history. Apologies for any inaccuracies, as I say. I did have every, lots of notes on a piece of paper, which roughly about halfway around, I lost out of my pocket. Must uh, Somewhere in a field, there's my notes blowing around. So apologies for littering. I hope you enjoyed the tour of this area. And um, if you're coming out to, um, to watch the procession tomorrow, enjoy. Have fun. See you all later. Bye.